Good afternoon, Bermuda. Tomorrow, Bermuda will commemorate World Elder Abuse Day. World Elder Abuse Day is held on June 15th annually to bring awareness of elder abuse and negligence through cultural, social, and economic processes. Our elders should always get their share of respect, care, and concern. Elder abuse can be of many types, including financial abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, psychological abuse, and neglect. The global pandemic of 2020 caused all of our lives to come to a crashing halt. The effects of the stay-at-home order, public health regulations, social distancing, and mask wearing made our daily lives challenging, our tasks and chores cumbersome, and the lack of social interaction brought loneliness and anxiety to many. We cannot overlook how the pandemic has affected our seniors. Before the vaccine was available, our seniors were cut off from their connections to their community, families, and friends. In some cases, the effects of the last year have caused damaging cognitive and emotional scars. Today, we wish to shed light on elder abuse and how we can prevent this from happening in our community. This year's theme, Access to Justice, serves as a reminder of the importance to fully address the needs of our older persons who may seek recourse. During COVID-19, our aging and disability services were extremely busy responding to the needs of our seniors. Seniors who were usually independent were forced to stay put and seniors who did not have support were forced to seek assistance. We need to protect the social and human rights of older people in society. As such, there needs to be an understanding of the term elder abuse. Elder psychological abuse is the verbal or nonverbal infliction of emotional or mental anguish. Typically, the abuser repeats a pattern of behavior over time, intending to control the victim through fear. Psychological abuse, which leads to emotional fragility, is often intentional and the abuser uses coercion and manipulation to control or defraud a victim. Sometimes an abuser will employ multiple techniques to achieve a more profound response, particularly if they have an ulterior motive or emotionally or mentally abusing the victim. Some of the most common examples are bullying, threatening, harassing, intimidating, and coercing the victim. It is hard to imagine that anyone would deliberately want to harm a senior, but unfortunately, elder abuse is a problem. Physical elder abuse can be hard to recognize, but telltale signs include strange injuries or negative behavioral changes in an older person. Seniors often require extra attention or more intensive care. The responsibility for caregivers of families may sadly lead to physical harm. There is no excuse for abuse, but families and friends must know the warning signs and prevent putting the elderly in a physical danger. Family members should make sure that their loved ones are always in a safe environment. Elder neglect occurs when someone fails to care for an elderly person properly. It can be a family member or someone responsible for the senior's care. And instances of negligence are the caregiver not bathing, feeding, exercising, excessive restraints, not administering prescribed medicine regularly or over-medicating, and even not attending to medical needs, and even reducing a senior's opportunity to walk or mobilize. Neglect happens when the person responsible for the elder who is unable to care for themselves leaves the person alone in unsafe places or situations. In other cases, it is inexcusable and straightforward negligence, as you, well, as you well can imagine, if not addressed. It leaves serious emotional, physical, and sometimes life-threatening problems. In some instances of elder abuse, they are intended to exploit the person financially. You've probably heard of scams targeting seniors. Financial abuse deprives older adults of their resources, independence, and in many cases, life savings and homes. There are increasing fraud cases against seniors or misuse of a person's assets or credit 
or undue influence to gain control of an older person's money. These are signs of possible exploitation. Elders have become targets and can be susceptible to scams or other fraud. fraud. Advances in technology can also make it difficult for seniors to know who to trust and what's safe. I am reminding seniors that cybercrime is taking place more frequently. In this digital information age, cybersecurity and information security must be considered. And any warning notices posted by the Bermuda Police Service must be taken seriously. If you do the required steps to safeguard personal information, you can be protected from financial abuse. Signs of elder abuse can be physical, such as bruises, sores, dislocations, or broken bones, and they also include the inappropriate usage of medication. If your loved one is being neglected, the abuse signs may include weight loss, dehydration, and unclean surroundings. Seniors who are being financially abused may suddenly make changes to their wills, have unpaid bills, missing cash or goods, or unexplained withdrawals from their accounts. I will now share with you some tips in protecting yourself or your loved ones from elder abuse. Anticipate potential incapacitation and make sure your financial and legal affairs are in order. If they are not, enlist professional help to get them in order. With the assistance of a trusted family member or friend, only if you are absolutely sure that they will act in your best interest, whether you are of sound mind or not. Be very careful with who you add to your bank account. Ensure it is someone that you trust completely. Keep in touch with family and friends and avoid becoming isolated. Use safety devices and technology to assist with alerting monitoring agencies that help if needed. Carefully select a rest home or nursing home that can meet the needs of the elder. If you are unhappy with the care you are receiving, whether it is in your own home or in a care facility, speak up. These are just some simple things that you can do to protect yourself or your loved ones. Senior abuse reporting and investigation involves the investigation of all forms of senior abuse, including physical, sexual, psychological abuse, financial exploitation, and physical and psychological neglect that is reported to ADS. You can do this by calling 292-7802 or by emailing Aging and Disability Services referral and reporting form to ads at gov.bm. ADS also keeps the senior abuse register that is maintained by the registrar. Senior abuse should also be reported to the Bermuda Health Council if associated with a rest or nursing home. During the financial year 2020-21, there were 87 reported cases of alleged abuse in various forms, which include physical, psychological, and sexual abuse, financial exploitation, and neglect. Out of all the reports received by ADS, physical abuse made up the highest portion of reports received, at 30% 30, at 30%, while financial exploitation and psychological abuse was the second highest at 19%. The remaining 51% are a combination of mainly neglect and sexual abuse. Aging and Disability Services works in collaboration with the Bermuda Police Service on abuse cases and where appropriate cases proceed to charges and prosecution. During financial year 2020-2021, Aging and Disability Services supported 45 clients through abuse-related investigations in conjunction with the Bermuda Police Service. In Bermuda, as well as other jurisdictions, it is recognized that it is difficult to take care of an elder who has many different needs, and it's equally difficult to be elderly when age brings with it the infirmities and levels of dependence. Both the demands of caregiving support and the needs of our elders can create circumstances in which abuse is more likely to occur. 
In closing, I would like to remind the public that in 2019, the government introduced the Bermudian Charter of Rights and Responsibilities of the Elderly and Adults in Need of Long-Term Care and Assistance, adapted from the European Charter of the Rights and Responsibilities of Older Persons in Need of Long-Term Care and Assistance to Suit Bermuda's Needs. The Charter is a reference document setting out the fundamental principles and rights needed for the well-being of those who are dependent on others for support and care due to age, illness, or disability. The government adopted this document to raise awareness for individuals and the community of people's fundamental rights and responsibilities who have long-term care needs and to foster best practices and to complement and support other measures which are already implemented or in development. The Charter was developed based on international and local standards and is available for review at www.gov.bm. As we move beyond the pandemic, I encourage everyone who is blessed to have their senior loved ones with them, follow up with them, and discuss their care and concerns. And as the theme of world elder abuse states, it is up to us to make sure that they have access to justice. At this time, I want to personally thank all the seniors of Bermuda as they have paved the way for many of us today. And I want to personally thank all those persons who work tirelessly to care and assist our seniors. Thank you. Good afternoon, Minister. This, Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Seku Hendrickson. I'm a junior reporter with the Royal Gazette. <clears throat> um, I think it's fitting to ask that, um, well, I understand that during the 2021-2022 budget, it was stated that a uh, national senior strategy would be developed. I was wondering if there are any updates on this um, on the strategy. I, the update that I can provide is that we are still dil diligently uh, working towards a national st senior strategy. So that was an initiative that was put towards our uh, throne speech initiatives, and that is an area that we are continuing to work towards. Okay. Um, so far, um, I guess, what can be expected of the, um, of the senior strategy? So a strategy would outline what um, a country would want for their seniors um, going forward, and it addresses many areas. Um, it can look at uh, seniors abuse, it can look at housing, it can look at long-term care, it can look at health care, it can look at a, a, a many, many array of uh, concerns. It could look at uh, aging well or aging healthily. Um, so the national senior strategy will, will look at what Bermuda will want overall uh, for uh, a strategy for our seniors. I see, and I guess so far what has been established um, with regards to these, um, to these, these wants and, um, and requirements? So uh, there have been many reports um, that have been done across many ministries. Uh, there has been a long-term care report. There's been a study done by uh, Age Concern. And then there are many studies uh, and statistics that we do collect uh, with Bermuda Housing, I'm sorry, Bermuda Health Council. Um, that looks at uh, where our seniors are, what sort of support services they will need going forward. And so there, there, there's lots of data that we have, um, and the, as well as the Aging Well Committee, I must not forget them, who also look at um, what seniors' needs are for Bermuda, in Bermuda. Is there any of that that you can potentially share? So it's all on government's website. Okay. If, you go, <laughs> if you go to www.gov.bm, and do a search for um, senior senior care. Um, you'll you'll come across many reports that okay. have been done. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I guess on the opposite end of that spectrum, um, I understand that a children's commission was also hoped to be developed. Um, and so far, from what I understand, about uh, two hundred sixteen thousand dollars have been put towards that. Mm -hmm. um, again, could you just give us an update on um, on? What's going on with that Children's Commission? Yes, so we are we are steadily uh, progressing the Children's Commission. Right now we are uh, still uh, consulting with persons um, who are assisting us through this process. 
And so that is, again, one of the Throne Speech initiatives, which we are continuing to progress. So you should be hearing about more information about that coming forward. Um, is there any potential, uh, I guess, estimated time that we might be able to hear about this? Well, we're hoping to have it uh, uh, pushed out before the next third speech, so yes. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> this year. This year, hopefully this year. This year. Okay, um, and I think on that as well, um, on, I guess on the same topic of, of um, children, I understand that independent living coordinators um, were being contacted for um, for children who were aging out of out mm -hmm. of uh, care, and about six hundred thousand dollars has been put to that. Uh, can you just again? Is there any updates on that? Again, the uh, Department of Child and Family Services is also assisting and in initiating um, the transitional living services and coordinators uh, support services that we are looking to also progress. And so again, this is uh, something that we are progressing, and we will, when we have more information to share publicly, we will definitely share it with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I think this might actually be a good segue. Um, mm -hmm. So as I'm sure you're aware um, from recent reports that we've made, um, a Connette Robinson, who I understand was the Assistant Director of, um, of Department of Child and Family Services, um, <clears throat> I understand that she was involved in a, um, in a case that accused her of, um, of an assault on a 17-year-old girl and a DCFS, and she was still involved, when the standard procedure is to, uh, is to put somebody on suspended leave during this investigation. Um, so can you just explain why Ms. Robinson was still at uh, DCFS instead of being on leave at this time? So I, I must put out there for the record that I was not the minister at the time of any uh, decisions that were made, but any decision that would be made in regards to a civil servant would be the responsibility of the head of the public service. Um, and so, you know, I, I am sure this situation can be difficult for all parties involved, um, but that decision does follow a process and it is dealt with the head of civil service. And do you know if the head of civil service has said anything or shared anything about why this might have been? Yeah, we did share that information to mm. the Royal Gazette already. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. All right, All right. well, thank you, members of the media, for coming, and that concludes our press conference today.